Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. Got some great posts for you this week. Also, we are gonna start a new thing here on the roundups. The bookshelf behind me, every week I'm gonna change something up. You need to let me know what it is and let me know in the comments below. It'll be fun. Shout out to Reed Havens for the suggestion. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. We've got a post from the folks over at Power BI Tips looking at dynamic visuals using buttons. This is actually, I've seen this before, but it's a very cool trick that you can use inside of Power BI to just add some nice interactivity for your users for switching between items. In this post, they show you how you can actually use the combination of buttons, slicers, bookmarks, selections with your charts to actually get the outcome that you want. Sounds a little complicated. There's a little bit that goes into this, but it's a very cool trick that you can use with your visuals to enhance your report. The one word of caution I will throw out on this is because of the use of bookmarks and the fact that you need data checked, it could have some interesting side effects depending on what else you are doing in that report. So if you've got a ton of bookmarks, you wanna make sure you go through and test some things so that you don't get some odd behavior. But there you go, have fun. Reed Havens over at Havens Consulting has got a post and a video looking at how you can actually use conditional formatting with a card visual or like a single value visual. I love how he lays this out and just shows you like the different aspects of the conditional formatting within that visual and shows you how to actually do that from a formatting perspective. It's very cool, conditional formatting has come a long way. Make sure you're updated to the latest version of Power BI Desktop. And as always, check the link for this item down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. Phil Seamark is continuing his journey with DAX and his latest post talks about DAX fusion or just fusion with inside of the engine itself. We aren't talking about a nuclear reactor or the sun, but we're talking about how the engine can be smart enough to combine items in a single query to the storage engine without the need of multiple queries. This gets very geeky and gets into the internals of how everything works, and I personally love that. That's what I, I love, just learning more about internals and how things all work, because it makes me understand and use the product better. Phil also calls out that this absolutely applies to direct query as well. So this is how one of the things that Power BI does or analysis services does to improve performance from a direct query perspective. So very cool. Check it out, links are down below and you can geek out with me. Daniel Rubolo has a blog post looking at how you can actually connect Azure Analysis Services to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. The blog post out on Power BI actually points to a community blog post where he has all the gory details if you want to go ahead and do this. I'm really curious just if anyone's actually trying to connect Azure Analysis Services to Azure Data Lake Storage. Let me know down below. Chris Finland's got another blog post for all you paginated folks out there talking about what's on the horizon for paginated reports and also what's coming very soon. There's an update for Power BI Report Builder that's coming out which will help indicate the endorsements for your data sets if you're trying to connect to a Power BI data set. We also had the recent announcement of the support for embedding of paginated reports. You can actually embed those items. And then Chris goes on to talk about some things that are coming on the horizon, one of those being URL support for parameters, which is amazing, I'm waiting for this. Chris absolutely knows that I'm waiting for this because I bug him almost daily. He also mentions support for secure embed as well as updates to subscriptions for monthly cadences. So for all the details, check out the blog post. You know where it is down below. All right, what was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. I wanna hear it, let me know down in the comments below and continue the conversation. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.